Nous allons maintenant passer à Yehuda Schwartz, qui est avec nous ici à Saint-Pierre-en-Galicante. Yehuda, uh, I'll speak in English. Uh, Yehuda has uh, created Federation of uh, Israel-Palestine. Donc c'est une forme d'association entre l'Israël et la Palestine. So our organization is uh, promoting a special federation of uh, Israel-Palestine, and my point will be about federating Abrahamic identities. Our conflict is a, an identity conflict. To resolve it, we need to understand Jewish identity and its relationship to the land. This identity originates from the Abrahamic identity that is common to us, Arab and Jews. Christians and Muslims. This is fundamental. Being born in the land of Israel, according to the Bible, yeah, it doesn't make you a child of Israel. The children of Israel, Ben Israel, or Bani Israel in Arabic, who are the origin of the land, or are the origin of the Jewish people, did not receive their identity from the land. The land of Israel is not the pagan motherland. Mother Earth. The children of Israel are named as a family, the children of the ancestor Jacob Israel. You either belong to the family or you do not. You can be adopted, or, however, if you adopt his laws and customs. According to the Torah, its funding story, the motherland of the Jewish people is Egypt. The exit, the exit from Egypt was its birth. It matured through 40 years in the desert, where it organized itself into a federative alliance of families, clans, and tribes. It was not until it was formed that it was able to enter and conquer its promised land. The land of Israel is therefore a land wife, which the children of Israel fertilize and which gives them fruit. Moreover, The people of Israel occupied the land of Canaan, the land of another people. He must justify his possession of the land by loving the stranger, for he himself was a stranger in exile. Abraham, our common ancestor, Arab and Jews, showed his children the way when he heard the command, you must leave your land, your motherland, which gave birth to you. Abraham was not born in the land of Canaan. Like him, we are not natives. Autochtones. Our common Abrahamic identity says exactly the opposite. We are in fact all immigrants, temporary guests on this earth, which truly belongs only to our common creator. And what did Abraham, as soon as he entered the land of Canaan, he made an alliance with local kings. For nomadic groups, jealous of their independence and freedom, entering into federative alliances is a natural way to form a state. The first state of Israel was a federation of 12 tribes, just like that of Ishmael. The first Islamic state in Medina was also a federation of tribes, Arab and Jewish tribes. Jews, Christian and Muslim lived together in their autonomous communities under the Ottoman Caliphate and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And the UAE is a thr thriving federation of Arab Emirates. And how do they call their recent alliance with Israel? The Abraham Accords. This federal precedent should inspire us. We must also learn from the constitution of modern federations like that of Switzerland or that of Canada. We two Israelis and Palestinians are in need of a supranational federal framework. Let us not remain hostages to nation states created by local powers here in the Middle East. Their pagan nationalism invented artificial nations defined as the population living in the same territory. They obliged us, all the inhabitants of the same territory, to assimilate and to merge into the same one nation. But in fact, the majority imposes itself upon the minorities and, domi and dominates them. Therein lies the source of our identity conflict and its symptoms, the demographic threat. So what will our federation look like? And I'm finishing. Each citizen will have dual nationality, national and federal. He will be able to live wherever he wants between the sea and the Jordan River. 
and vote for his own national parliament and for the federal parliament. The federal state would be a supranational sovereign up, up over the whole territory, and there would be a single federal army defending the external borders. The federal constitution would prevent one nation from dominating the other, regardless of demographic ratios. I therefore call you, call on you, Israelis, Palestinians, and internationals who are so ready to support us to participate in the creation of a supranational Israeli-Palestinian Abrahamic Federation. This artificial conflict will be largely solved. As for the details of the constitution of this federation, I refer you to my website pa-il.org. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now I give the floor to Peter. Peter uh, belongs to Elijah Interface and also to Praying Together in Jerusalem, who monthly, on a monthly basis, organize an interfaith prayer. Uh, it was physical, and because of the corona, it has been made by Zoom, but the first one, <laughs> and I was there, uh, uh, it took place just a few days ago in Jerusalem. Peter, you've got the floor. Thanks a lot for your contribution to this forum. Thank you, Mark. Uh, the Elijah Interfaith Institute was founded by Alon Gosh and Godstein, Rabbi Alon Gosh and Godstein, 23 years ago. And when uh, Mark invited him to participate in this forum, he at first thought we should decline because we're not actually a peace organization in this country. Our uh, peace, of course, has local components. Peace has... But it is fair. Peace has slowly, please, for the interpretation. Peace has local components. Peace has, peace has global components. And peace also has cosmic components. Earlier this evening, uh, Mustafa Basue asked about theology, and Rabbi Melchior said religions must have a role in all of this. Well, that's what the Elijah Interfaith Institute does. We talk theology, and we talk between religions on a global level. In fact, the Elijah Interfaith Institute now is working with seven different world religions. So how do we con contribute to peace in the Middle East? Well, first of all, our motto is sharing wisdom, fostering peace. We believe that the world's great religions all make a huge or potentially make a huge contribution to peace because they have ancient wisdom, and if the wisdom of religions is harnessed, it will in fact be making peace. But we also have to share in the inter-religious dialogue to gain understanding, because due to forces of geography and history, religions have become divided, and our job is to find not just the common elements, but the wisdom we can share. And the Elijah Interfaith Institute is unique in that it sees Jerusalem as the hub of bringing religions together. Not just the three Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, who believe in Jerusalem as the capital, but indeed, we believe that Jerusalem is a center for holiness for all peoples, regardless of their religious affiliation. And our vision is hope. Hope is a house of prayer and education based in Jerusalem. In Hebrew, we say, Ki mitzion Torah, from out of Jerusalem shall go forth goodness and law. We adhere to the vision of the prophets that everybody should come to Jerusalem and be together in Jerusalem in peace. And there, from there came praying together in Jerusalem, which the Elijah Interfaith Institute does with many partners. Our co-partner was the Tantur Ecumenical Institute and many other partners. And we do believe in prayer as a force for peace. We don't just pray in the hope that others will make peace. We pray because we believe that praying together is an act of peace and has a power and force of its own. So out of Jerusalem should emanate peace for the world, and from the world and greater understanding, we should bring peace to Jerusalem. Thank you very much. We're going to switch to uh, Reverend Monther Isaac. He has created a Christ at the Checkpoint, 
I think he's in Bethlehem, so in the West Bank. Yes, we can see you now. Thank you for joining us. We haven't met, never met uh, physically, instead, in spite of that, I spent six months in Bejala, but I'm very glad we, we, you are with us. And you, I think you, uh, Christians uh, Evangelical, organizes this event of encounters between uh, all kinds of population among, uh, uh, especially Arab, Palestinian, also with some uh, Jewish, Jewish people. Uh, you've got the floor for, for three minutes, please. So, uh, good evening by now, uh, and greetings from Bethlehem, and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to be part of this uh, forum and this panel. Uh, I direct Christ at the Checkpoint, uh, which is a movement of Bethlehem Bible College. Uh, the main um, idea behind Christ at the Checkpoint is to hold uh, theological conferences to engage our reality as uh, Palestinians with our faith, in this case as Palestinian Christians with our Christian faith, and at the same time to challenge uh, positions that are uh, about the conflict that are exclusive, uh, militaristic, uh, apocalyptic, uh, mainly by uh, evangelicals uh, uh, in West, mainly in North America, uh, positions that are many times interpretations of the Bible, both anti-Palestinian and anti-Jewish. Uh, um, so we engage with uh, mainly evangelicals. Many times we invite people on opposing sides to debate and to uh, engage with one another, uh, but we've also held uh, in our movement, in our conferences, conversations with Jewish leaders and Muslim leaders uh, as well. Uh, we have found that many times theology plays a negative role in promoting peace, and if I'm honest, many times the theology that comes from the West is, 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 is a big factor uh, in the conflict that we have and empowering, for example, uh, the occupation. Uh, our position is that to counter all religious uh, or all extreme positions, fundamentalist positions in all religions, uh, our response should be a call uh, for uh, dialogue, for uh, inclusive realities. Uh, we speak of the language of sharing the land, uh, where there is no discrimination, no second class citizens, where we share all uh, the resources, uh, which means the end of the occupation as we have it. Uh, and we also believe that our response cannot be limited to simply calls for peace uh, and harmony, uh, calls uh, for, uh, you know, we make positions, but, but we, we, what we need is, is more action. Uh, it's important to engage with one another. It's important to hold theological reflections and to challenge one another, uh, but we need to address the core issues. So here is, here is my premise, and I hope my contribution to this panel if interfaith initiatives fail to challenge uh, the current status quo uh, of occupation, of settlements, uh, if they fail to address the imbalance of power uh, by making calls to both sides as if it's like a, a conflict between two equals, uh, these interfaith uh, initiatives are doomed to failure, I believe. Uh, and even worse, uh, we are uh, empowering what we call here in Palestine the peace industry. You know, we've just heard that there are more than uh, 100 peace organizations in Israel. Many of them, I'm sure, are doing a great job, but we have to wonder why isn't there peace after all uh, these years? So if we fail to address and discuss, for example, the nation state law, which clearly discriminates from a religious perspective against non-Jews, uh, uh, we end up just seeing Kumbaya and uh, I believe we empower the unjust systems. So I believe, and at Christ at the checkpoint, we want to say that peacemaking means taking a stand uh, against uh, injustice, speaking truth to power, making a stand for truth. We have to speak truth to power. The forum uh, title was, how should we, uh, how can we reinvent peace together? Maybe we should change it to, how can we end all unjust systems together? How can we challenge all unharmful, uh, all harmful theologies uh, together uh, that, that prevent uh, peace? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Munther. Um, we'll move to our last uh, panelist uh, on this uh, part. So that's Yehuda Stolov. I just, we are, uh, we are late. So we'll give the floor also to Mustafa uh, to have a conclusion. 
And also we have a question, we have chosen, Grégoire has chosen uh, a question, or uh, two questions. Uh, well, there is a question on Islam, and maybe Nivin can answer that uh, later on. Is Islam uh, the, is the official religion of the Palestinian territories or not? And we have a question from Martine Cohen in France. And uh, if she can uh, ask herself, I will give her the floor if she unmutes herself at the, the video, Martine. Otherwise, I will ask the question for her. So our last okay. is Yehuda Stoloff. Thank you, Martine. Uh, Yehuda Stoloff is very active. They have, uh, his association is Interface uh, uh, Encounters, e IEA. Uh, Association, I, I, Interface Encounters Association, sorry. And you have about 100 groups active in Israel and also, also, also sorry, on the West Bank. Uh, so you last, uh, can you, uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, the Interface Encounter Association was established uh, Nine, more than 19 years ago, less than one year after the Second Intifada started. Uh, the Second Intifada made it very clear that uh, governments alone cannot uh, make sustainable peace. And it is critical, like many people mentioned before me today, uh, to involve the grassroots actively in building such a, such a, a, a foundations of peace. Um, we decided to focus on interfaith exchange because of three reasons. When we talk about uh, our faith and, and religion and culture, our spiritual aspect, we meet each other on our deepest level and therefore uh, we connect because of that. Um, Secondly, when we talk about uh, faith and religion, we discover that we have many similarities between us. And for new people, this comes as a real revelation. And thirdly, maybe more important, is the fact that within this framework, we are able to discuss differences in a constructive way that makes the conversation richer and makes it more interesting. It doesn't threaten the conversation. And through that, we train ourselves to develop friendships with people we disagree with. Uh, as you mentioned, we work mostly through ongoing groups. We see each group as a core of people building uh, good neighbors relations between their respective communities. We do not focus on solving the whole conflict in one document. We focus uh, on, a practic on small practical steps that takes the, the situation and makes it better. And as you said, we established until now 108 groups throughout the Holy Land from the Lebanese borders to, to Eilat, including many groups between Israelis and Palestinians, um, with many, many thousands of people who participated. Most of them have met the other for the first time through our activities. Um, uh, I, wel I welcome all of you and all our uh, uh, viewers to join, to look us up on the internet, interface-encounter.org. Uh, write to us and join our activities. Thank you very much.